dear friends welcome to our series of lectures on fundamentals of organic chemistry in previous lecture we have learnt about structure of organic molecules today we are going to learn about reaction mechanism and reactivity of organic molecules well so what is the reaction what is the reaction reaction is a process where reactant and reagent react together to give product and by product clear yes so reaction is a process where reactant and reagent react together to give product and a by product and this process should be shown in the form of equation what the form equation let us see a reaction where alkyl halide or x is giving a product of product alcohol in this equation alkyl halide or x is a reactant and oh that is hydroxide ion is a reagent is giving alcohol as a product and halide as a by product so reaction is a process where reactant and reagent react together to give product and by product good and it should be shown in the form of equation right so how this reaction takes place so question arises how this reaction takes place are there any factors which affects the path of reaction or the mechanism of reaction yes there are three factors there are three factors which affects our reaction mechanism among them the first one is bond fission what is the first one bond fission second second one is reaction uh, types of reagents the reagent what we are using in a reaction is mostly it affects the mechanism of a reaction so the second one is types of reagent and types of reaction what type of reaction is going to take place in a particular reaction so the three factors are bond fission types of reagents and types of reaction let us take bond fission bond fission yes bond fission the name itself says that it is a cleavage of a bond cleavage of a bond cleavage of a bond or a fission of a bond takes place in two manners how many ways in two manners that is homolytic fission homolytic fission and heterolytic fission two types homolytic fission and heterolytic fission let us see homolytic fission so bond fission is two types first one is homolytic fission homolytic fission and second one is heterolytic fission homolytic fission what is the homolytic fission homolytic fission is a symmetrical cleavage like same symmetrical cleavage if it is like this if it is this is a bond it open up towards both ends it's a symmetrical cleavage of a bond is known as homolytic fission symmetrical cleavage of a bond is known as homolytic fission it is represented with fish hook like this fish hook arrow mark and these arrows should be shown towards both the atoms and after this cleavage or in this homolytic fission we will get two free radicals what we will get two free radicals the bond fission takes place symmetrically to give two free radicals and where this type of homolytic fission takes place this type of homolytic fission takes place between the same electronegativity having atoms only where for example chlorine cl2 so the both the atoms are same one and the same so the atoms will be opened up to give free radicals let us see our organic molecule generally in organic chemistry most of the reactions are ionic type but there are few reactions where especially alkanes alkanes undergo this type of free radical reactions 
type of free radical reactions where because carbon and hydrogen electric electronegativity differences are very small so they are more or less equal in nature that is electronegativity of carbon and hydrogen is nearly same so both the atoms will open up in the manner of homolytic fission to give two free radicals one is carbon free radical and second one is hydrogen free radical so this is how we get two free radicals homolytic fission gives two free radicals and the fission takes place radically it is called radical mechanism if the reaction takes place via free radical reaction then the mechanism will follow the radical mechanism right so bond fission is two types first one is homolytic fission second one is heterolytic fission homolytic fission gives two free radicals like chlorine or alkanes where carbon and hydrogen free radicals are formed the mechanism follows radical mechanism second one second one is a heterolytic fission heterolytic fission heterolytic fission is a unsymmetrical cleavage unsymmetrical cleavage of bond takes place unsymmetrical cleavage of bond takes place and this reaction this heterolytic fission is represented with arrow arrow mark and the uh, arrow mark should be shown towards more electronegative molecule the more electronegative molecule or the electro molecule which is capable to attract or which capable to have more electronegativity then that molecule will get the negative charge that is anion and in this type of heterolytic fission we will get two ions yes one is donor another one is acceptor or some uh, which takes the electron pair will be represented as anion which loses electronic electron pair that is the bond electrons is represented as cation so the bond which undergoes heterolytic fission will give two ions one is cation other one is anion for example alkyl halide where carbon or alkane or is a less more or less uh, alkane and chlorine if we compare the electronegativity of chlorine and alkane uh, carbon definitely the chlorine electronegativity is more so the bonded uh, electrons will be shifted towards this chlorine and it gives rise to r plus cation that is cation and chlorine minus chloride ion hcl hyd hydronium ion and chloride ion carbon monoxide oxygen is more electronegative so we will get oxide oxygen o minus and c plus hbr yes similar to hcl hbr we will get two ions one is h plus and bromine minus what is the mechanism it follows since heterolytic fission takes place two ions are formed and the mechanism it follows ionic mechanism what is the mechanism it follows ionic mechanism so bond fission is two types first one is heterolytic sorry homolytic and second one is heterolytic fission homolytic fission gives rise to two free radicals and the mechanism it follows free radical mechanism and second one is heterolytic fission where heterolytic fission gives rise to two ions and the mechanism it follows is ionic mechanism and types of reagents and this is a very 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 important chapter where one must differentiate the type of reagent what we are getting because whole reaction mechanism depends on, on the type of reagent what we are using in a reaction once we know the reagent type then one can write or one can explain very easily the type of reaction so very very important so in bond fission how many types of reagents what we saw just now one is free radical and uh, other one is ions in ions there are two types one is 
cation and anion so there are three types of reagents are there broadly there are three types of reagents one is free radical reagents electrophilic reagents or positive cations all cations plus containing plus charge containing ions are electrophilic reagents and all negatively charged nucleophilic reagents free radicals electrophiles and nucleophiles good so free radicals where we will get free radicals free radicals are obtained by the fission of homolytic fission of a bond where it gives two free radicals for example hydro free radical chlorine free radical bromine iodo hydroxy alkoxy nitronium all a nitro free radical alkyl free radical like methyl ethyl etc and uh, there is a chance of getting phenyl free radical benzyl radical and allyl radical etc then in any given molecule how to know whether it is a free radical or some ionic yes when we calculate the total number of electrons in a given molecule after the bond fission the number of electrons present in that molecule is equal to a some odd number that is nitrogen is 7 if we take ni uh, NO2 free radical then the nitrogen atomic number is 7 oxygen atomic number is 8 there are two oxygens so 8 plus 8 16 7 plus 16 is 23 that means the total number of electrons present in free radical is equal to odd number so free radicals it is very easy wherever you see free radical like this dot simply you can say it's a free radical and this free radical is formed by homolytic fission of a bond so it is clear there is no type other type free radical means only one type free radical right let us take electrophilic reagent so electrophilic reagent is of again two types what is electrophilic reagent so the name itself says electron deficiency species so these are the reagents where electrons are deficient or it loves to accept the electron that is electron seeking or electron loving species electron pair accepting species for example these reagents loves to accept electrons all cations because it is a C plus that is plus charge it is vacant of two electrons that is why it allows to accept electrons all cations Lewis acids BF3 carbenes yes and uh, are there any types of reagents in this electrophilic reagents yes there are two types one is positive charged positively charged electrophiles and neutral electrophiles so positive electrophiles it is very easy the molecule or atom which bears positive charge yes simply one can say that this is a positive electrophile so say electrophile positive positive electrophile wherever you see plus charge plus charge electrophile plus charge electrophile plus charge electrophile so remember plus charge is a electrophile all cations h plus no2 plus r plus r0 plus cl plus bromine plus n number of plus charge molecules all comes under positive electrophiles then the twist comes here neutral electrophiles what is electrophile so electrophile is a molecule which loves to accept electron pair and we know that what is a Lewis acid Lewis acid is defined as the molecule which accepts lone pair of electrons is known as Lewis acid for example BF3 aluminum chloride ferric chloride zinc chloride so these are the examples which acts as neutral electrophiles and these are also known as Lewis acids so all Lewis acids comes under neutral electrophiles then the other form other type of uh, reagents are all carbenes so carbenes are these compounds are molecules where they use only valency of carbon 2 so they are in need of other two more electrons to get octet configuration so that it always tries to accept electronic pair so that is how they 
act as neutral electrophiles CHCl, CCl2, CHBr, CBr2 and very very important is that sulfur trioxide though it is a saturated it is saturated and the net charge is neutral but it acts as an electrophile because the electron density on sulfur is is taken up by three oxygen atoms surrounded three oxygen atoms which are present around sulfur so they always takes up the electron pair and so that this in total it acts as a neutral electrophile and very very important is carbon dioxide carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is a neutral electrophile iodonium chloride ozone ozone also is a neutral electrophile let us take nucleophilic reagents yes nucleophilic reagents are the reagents which carries negative charge on them that means these these reagents are electron excess species these reagents are electron excess species and these reagents are nucleus loving species which are negatively charged because these are electron pair donors so they react with positively charged molecules and this nucleophilic reagents are of two types one is negative nucleophile and neutral nucleophile so as name indicates all anions so the molecule which contains negative charge negative charge nucleophile negative charge nu nucleophile negative charge nucleophile negative charge nucleophile negative charge nucleophile all negatively charged reagents are nucleophiles all negatively charged nucleophiles are all negatively charged molecules are nucleophiles negative nucleophiles and these are the species are the reagents are nucleus loving species or electron pair donors these reagents donate their electron pairs fine and these are obtained by the means of heterolytic fission of a bond good and the important one is neutral nucleophiles neutral nucleophiles just now we saw that lewis acids are neutral electrophiles lewis acids are neutral electrophiles and lewis bases lewis bases are neutral nucleophiles so what is a new uh, lewis base lewis base is a molecule which donates lone pair of electrons is known as lewis base dear friends which is capable to donate lone pair of electrons is known as lewis base for example ammonia the lone pair electron present on ammonia is acts as a neutral nucleophile all ammonium ammonia containing molecules are known as neutral nucleophiles and very very important is water water is a new uh, neutral nucleophile water is a nucleophile be careful water is a nucleophile what is a nucleophile alcohol is a nucleophile alcohol is a nucleophile ether very important ether is a neutral nucleophile mercapto alcohol that is thiols thioethers are neutral nucleophiles and the other category are all organo metal compounds organo metal co compounds are also known as neutral nucleophiles though they contain charges on them but on total the, the charge is neutral so they act as neutral nucleophiles grignard reagent please remember grignard reagent is a neutral nucleophile if someone asks what is the grignard reagent whether it is a electrophile or nucleophile yes it's a neutral nucleophile grignard reagent is a neutral nucleophile alkyl lithium all lithium contain butyl lithium methyl lithium it's a neutral nucleophile it's a nucleophile be careful butyl lithium is used in most of the reactions of organic chemistry 
so careful it may act as a nucleophile so that is why in some reactions this beta lithium is converted into lithium diisopropyl amide LDA where LDA acts as a non nucleophilic base LDA acts as a non nucleophilic base though this is beta lithium is a base it is a base beta lithium itself may act as a base but it is a neutral nucleophile because it is a nucleophile it may affect our reaction mechanism to avoid that reaction mechanism or to avoid side reactions of this beta lithium we convert this beta lithium into LDA lithium diisopropyl amide where lithium diisopropyl amide is a non nucleophilic base there is no nucleophilic nature any question no alkyl sodium alkyl zinc halides this is alkyl halide zinc reformatsky reagent reformatsky reagent is also known as neutral nucleophile rmgx alkyl lithium alkyl sodium rmg uh, alkyl uh, zinc halides also known as neutral nucleophiles so just now we saw reaction mechanism depends on mainly three factors one is bond fission other one is types of reagents what we use so bond fission takes place in two forms that is one is homolytic fission second one is heterolytic fission good and the types of reagents we know there are three types one is free radical electrophile and nucleophile all positive charge charged ions are known as electrophiles negative charged ions are known as known as nucleophiles and lewis acids are lewis acids are electrophiles lewis bases are nucleophiles very good let us see some examples so bromonium ion positive charge electrophile negative charge nucleophile lone pair electron is present so neutral nucleophile carbene neutral electrophile so be careful just by seeing this lone pair don't assign it as a neutral nucleophile all carbenes are be careful all carbenes are neutral electrophiles iron isonium ions positive electrophiles deuterium ion deuterium this is one a very very important one d dot is a free radical just now what i said beta lithium in beta lithium is a neutral nucleophile phenocyl positive electrophile lithium aluminum hydride lithium aluminum hydride is a neutral nucleophile lithium aluminum hydride or lah is one of the best reducing agents available in organic chemistry that is why lithium aluminum hydride hydride please remember it is a neutral nucleophile what it is it's a neutral nucleophile bisulfite ion negatively charged nucleophile hydronium ion positive electrophile hydronium ion or protonated water is positive electrophile this is how we can characterize the reagent what type of reagent it is free radical electrophile nucleophile if electrophile positively charged or neutral if nucleo uh, nucleophile whether it is a negatively charged or neutral nucleophile clear yes and the other factor types of reactions so reaction mechanism depends on three factors <coughs> sorry first one is bond fission second one is types of reagents and third one is types of reactions so in this video we learn only basics of types of reactions and in next video i am going to explain in detail about types of reactions all types of reactions just we will go through the types of reactions available in organic chemistry so as in mathematics there are uh, basically three reactions that is substitution reaction where like in mathematics we will do some substitution substitution reactions as in mathematics 
addition reaction 1 plus 1 2 plus 2 or 1 plus 2 1 plus 3 like addition reactions elimination reaction elimination will take out will take out the part some part of the molecule that is elimination reaction and th fourth one is a molecular rearrangement reaction there is some rearrangement takes place the molecule which is attached here it may move to here or which is here it may come to here and pericyclic reaction so it's a cyclic reaction where this type of reaction will not follow any ionic or peri uh, radical mechanism remaining reactions follow a definite okay definite reaction pathway let us take substitution reactions these are very 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 important reactions in organic chemistry substitution reactions there are three types of reactions substitution reaction for example alkyl halide when it reacts with some reagent some reagent whether it is a free radical electrophile nucleophile all depends on the reaction what it is going to take place and this x is substituted with y to give or y product that is why it is substituted x is substituted by reagent y so the types of reactions are the mechanism follows based on the reagent what we are using very very important the reaction mechanism follows based on the reagent what we are using if we use free radical reagent the substitution is known as free radical substitution if we use electrophil electrophile as a reagent then the reaction will be a electrophilic substitution if we use nucleophile as a reagent then the reaction will be nucleophilic substitution reaction so there are three types of substitution reactions first one is free radical electrophilic second one third one is nucleophilic substitution so again there are some more other uh, divisions among this free radical electrophilic and nucleophilic next lesson we will learn in detail about substitution reactions second one is addition reaction just now what i said addition reaction is is a reaction where some reagent adds to the reactant some reagent reagent type a b adds to reactant to give product is known as addition reaction so if the reagent a b is a free radical then the mechanism or the reaction is known as free radical addition reaction if the reagent is electrophilic in nature the reaction is known as electrophilic addition if the reagent is nucleophilic then the reaction is known as nucleophilic addition so substitution is three types substitution reactions are three types free radical electrophilic and nucleophilic similar way addition reactions also three types free radical electrophilic and nucleophilic clear yes and third one is elimination reaction elimination reaction the name itself says that some part or some of the part of a molecule is eliminated from its body or from its uh, molecule some part of the molecule is eliminated is known as elimination reaction so this elimination reaction is also again two types one is alpha elimination and second one is beta elimination good and the fourth type of reactions or uh, reaction mechanism types of reactions is molecular rearrangement reaction and this again two types where some rearrangement takes place in this reaction for example some molecule is attached to a and if the reaction undergoes this type of molecular rearrangement then the attached or molecule is shifted to molecule b clear yes this is how there are two types intramolecular and intermolecular and the last one pericyclic reaction types of reactions last one is pericyclic reaction so pericyclic reactions uh, neither free radical type reactions nor ionic type reactions they are concerted we don't know how they re really follow the mechanism or the path 
but they are concerted within no time or within uh, no time they are concerted there is no steps only one step it's a cyclic reaction pericyclic reactions and they give products some of the examples are the different types of uh, reactions known under this category are electrocyclic reaction cyclo addition reaction sigmatropic reactions we learn all these types in next video thank you thank you thank you for watching your watching my video and thank you for sparing your valuable time please subscribe my video if you like it like it please try to comment some comments so that i can improve further uh, betterments are further useful to the audience thank you in next video we are going to learn about substitution reaction that is free radical substitution electrophilic substitution and nucleophilic substitution in this video we have learned about mainly three factors which affects reaction mechanism one is bond fission other one is types of reagents and types of reactions bond fission is of two types one is one is homolytic fission second one is heterolytic fission homolytic fission gives rise to free radicals heterolytic fission gives rise to ions clear right and types of reagents very very important types of reagents there are three types free radicals electrophilic reagents and nucleophilic reagents free radicals are only one type which are formed by homolytic fission and if the reaction involves free radical the mechanism it follows is free radical mechanism next one is electrophiles and nucleophiles these are two types of ions which formed by heterolytic fission of a bond yes electrophiles are positively charged reagents are electrophiles neutral charged reagents are nucleophiles these are clear and one more other ones also adds to electrophile and nucleophile for example lewis acids are neutral electrophiles lewis bases are neutral nucleophiles clear and types of reactions types of reactions mainly based on the reagent what we are using in a reaction is very very important where that dictate the path of a reaction or that dictate the reaction mechanism for example if we use free radical as a reagent the reaction mechanism it follows is a free radical reaction or whether it is substitution addition or whatever it is if we use electrophile as a reagent electrophilic reaction nucleophile is used nucleophilic reaction nucleophilic substitution nucleophilic addition reaction like that this is how the reaction mechanism depends on these three factors and in next video we will going to learn in detail about substitution reactions in organic chemistry thank you